Anthony Fasano here from Pass the PE Exam, and in this week's video, I'm gonna talk about how you can understand which engineering experience will qualify for the PE exam so that when you fill out your application, you don't get denied. This week's video is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. One question that I get all the time from engineers and I continue to get emails on this topic is, how do I know if the experience I'm getting will qualify for the PE exam? So when you fill out your application and you submit it, will it pass? Will you be able to sit for the principles and practice of engineering exam? In this video, I want to talk through that and try to help you with that challenge. I mean, we've done videos on this before, but I continue to get more questions. So I want to walk through with you so that when you submit your application, it doesn't get denied. All right. So firstly, when you submit your PE application, you're going to have to kind of catalog all of your work experience and provide the supervisor that oversaw you during that experience. And they're gonna to have to be also a professional engineer. What happens a lot of the time is people will fill out their application, they'll submit it to their state education department, and it will get denied, or at least a part of their experience will get denied, which means then they're gonna to have to work for another six months or another year or another two years before they can sit for the exam. And that can be really, really dangerous because if you wait two more years, anything could happen, right? You could start to have a family, you could have a very high stress job, you could start traveling for work, and it could get much harder for you to then get your application back in, study and pass the exam, right? The earlier, the better, like a lot of things in life. Now, what you have to understand, and a lot of people don't understand this, is while the test overall is administered by the NCWS, whether or not you can sit for the exam and you actually get your license is dependent upon the state that you want to work in as a professional engineer. Typically, the state education department in each state has an engineering board. Sometimes it's with other professions, surveying, engineering, geology, etc. But they review the applications and they ultimately decide if you're worthy of sitting for the PE exam. And so what I recommend to everyone, and, and for some reason people don't take the time to do this, is to reach out to someone on that board you can usually go to the website and contact them. There's email address, there's a phone number, and talk to them about the experience requirements. I know, for example, in New York, which is where I applied for and received my engineering license, you really had to be specific when you wrote your application about the work that you did. Like you couldn't say, for example, I worked on a team that designed a two-lane bridge over this river in this city. You needed to say, I worked on the structural design of the beams with concrete materials utilizing these equations for this bridge in this municipality. You have to say I. I know generally speaking from a leadership perspective, you know, when you're building a team and a team culture, you don't want to say I or me. You want to say we, we worked as a team. But when it comes to filling out your PE application, you need to be selfish and say, I did this, I did this, I did this and list all of the things that you specifically did. So by having a conversation or an email exchange with someone on the board, you may be able to understand what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. And that can be really important. Some questions that we get that vary by state to state are internships, is that experience accepted? Some states say yes, some states say no. I was able to get some of my internship experience accepted, but that was a long time ago. So also things change over time. That's why asking the question can help you to be better prepared. Right? We've also had questions like, does construction experience or construction administration experience when you're in the field overviewing construction, does that 
um, will that be accepted or not? And that's a tricky one because it kind of depends on what you're doing, right? If you're overseeing construction, doing construction administration tasks, and you have to get involved with the design of a project and review the details of the design, the board may consider that experience, like design experience for an engineer. But if you're simply out in the field, you're observing construction, filing some reports, they may not. So again, you really want to understand from the board what they will and will not accept. Now, the other thing that you can do that I highly recommend is find someone either within your company or someone that you know, a colleague that has had an application accepted by that state board and was able to sit for the PE exam and go through their application. Use it as an example. And I don't want to say copied, of course, but maybe look at the terms that they use and the language that they use and the type of work that they've submitted that was approved. And you can use that knowledge and some of their examples when you craft your application. I think the most important thing is you want to be completely truthful on your application. But the challenge with that statement is that being truthful is one thing, but if you don't explain it properly, you could be discounted. So you really want to understand the key things that they're looking for. And I don't know if it's possible, but if it is possible, you might even want to go in person and meet with them and sit down with them and explain your situation, especially if you have a situation where you feel like is a little bit up in the air in terms of whether or not your experience will count. Like if you do a lot of construction administration. And the other thing that I'll say as well is those of you that are located outside of the U.S. and you're looking to come to the U.S. and get your license, that's a whole nother story. Because now you may not have an education from an ABED accredited school. You may or may not have passed your FE exam. And while there are ways to get your license without doing those things, it really is a case-by-case -case basis. And you're going to have to, again, I recommend talking to a board member and understand their process for evaluating professionals that come from outside the U.S. and that may not have some of the other requirements needed to sit for the PE exam. And if you talk to them, I've seen it before where someone um, from outside the U.S. does get accepted to sit for the PE exam because their school was considered, you know, uh, acceptable, even though maybe it wasn't ABED accredited or they worked in industry for 12 years and they had a lot of design experience and they could prove that. So they were able to sit for the exam. So the bottom line is, is while the PE exam itself is very challenging, right? Eight hours of rigorous problems. You have to study for it and prepare for it. What's even more important is that you have the ability to sit and take the exam and the application process drives that. And the way you fill out that application can dictate whether or not you sit for the exam. So please put some time, effort, and energy into it. Please talk to people that have gotten approved in the past in your state. That's important. It has to be someone that got approved in your state. Every state's different. And talk to someone on the board. Do your due diligence to make sure that you only have to fill out that application once and you can sit for the exam and then pass the PE exam. I hope you found this video helpful. We'll continue to put out videos like this on a weekly basis to help you pass the PE exam. And please leave comments and questions below this video and I will answer them. Maybe there's a specific problem you need some help with or an issue on your application or the exam that you just can't quite figure out, pass the PE exam will help you please consider subscribing to our channel here so you can get all of our tips and tricks to pass the PE exam. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE Exam.